Baja California. This narrow peninsula in northwestern Mexico is about 1,300 kilometers long. A lot of tourists who come here fly to Cabo San Lucas and spend a week or two in the southernmost areas. But Baja California is so much more. It is basically just a big desert with only one paved road going through it all. Due to its isolated nature, its land and coast are home to a large variety of white birds, dolphins, whales, coyotes, foxes, just to name a few. Even the iconic explorer Jacques Cousteau called the Sea of Cortez the world's aquarium. All of it makes this wild peninsula a perfect place for an adventure and a road trip. After crossing the border from US by foot and staying a month in the Ensenada, we rented a car and it was time to hit the road. and it didn't take long for the desert to start revealing its magic. As we were driving towards the mountains, we were welcomed with a gorgeous moonrise. Baja California. We started the trip from Ensenada and we made the first stop in uh, La Bufadora and by the evening we went came to this uh, desert. We stayed the last night in Rancho because it's really cold to camp at the moment in here in the mountains and we don't have proper sleeping gear for that. Uh, we just did the hike to this viewpoint here. So this mountain behind me here this is the Picacho. It's the highest or tallest mountain of the whole peninsula. Views here are amazing. You can see the Sea of Cortes from here, the sea that is between the Baja Peninsula and the mainland. Anyways, the plan for the next couple of weeks is to do a road trip all around Baja California, all the way down to Cabo and back. We will see how we will manage. We don't know, we don't have exact plans, but probably it's gonna be quite an epic trip. It's the second day and already these kind of views. So it's uh, day number three on uh, Baja road trip. So we just stayed in San Quintin yesterday. I just saw from the Google Maps that there are some kind of volcanoes right next to it. We just climbed one of those. But as it turns out, what we saw on the map is actually another one. We were expecting a volcano with a crater. And as you can see, there's no crater in here, but there's another one there which has a crater, which we can see from here. It's a bit smaller than this hill, but it has a crater. So we just uh, climbed the wrong mountain, apparently. <laughs> but still, the landscape is really cool around here. From the volcanoes in San Quintin, we followed the road south, through the desert and small settlements. We started to notice the many different faces of the desert. So we are driving in the middle of another desert here. Uh, actually, this highway has been going straight for I don't know how many kilometers, just straight cutting through the desert landscape. I just wanted to talk about the different kind of deserts in this area because it has been so interesting that how the landscape can change and, and how a desert can be different in such a short period of time. From sandy soils to rocky landscapes, like in Cartagena, from endless flat and straight roads to curvy mountain roads. I had no idea that cacti can be so different. What is a great example is the cactuses, the cacti. Like these ones as you see in here, this is kind of the one that you see in movies. This is what you usually think when you think about the cactus. Or for example, this one right here. But there are so many different styles. I think we have seen like three or four different styles of cactuses. Opuntia chola, Opuntia pugnantha, Cereal or Bojum tree, Baja tree yucca, and many more. By that evening, we reached our first wild camping beach, Bahia de los Sanjales. We noticed a group of coyotes lurking around our campsite in the evening. 
There were six of them looking out for food and they came uncomfortably close from time to time. After a stunning sunrise, we continued our way. Time to time, the endless road took us through small settlements. As we arrived at the border between Baja California Norte and Sur, a road crossing through water caught our attention. And as it turned out, it was exactly how it looked like on the map. We knew that Lago Ofo de Liebre is home to migrating grey whales. But we did not know that it is also home to the world's largest salt production and also a bird sanctuary. By the end of day number five, we reached an eco resort in the middle of an empty desert. Okay, so I want to show the accommodation for the night. We just arrived uh, to this place, which is like really, really rustic, but the location is amazing. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's actually next to a volcano called Tres Virgenes. Yeah, there are these houses here, the old wooden houses, but they're really, really affordable and it's really, really quiet around here. This place is literally amazing to be here. We spent the day resting and enjoying the nature and on Christmas Eve decided to hike the peak of Tres Virgenes. We decided to uh, come and climb a volcano today. We woke up like 4.30, started coming like 5, 6 and now we are maybe like halfway. I'm gonna be there like on the top probably in 3 or 4 hours, 4 hours. After a successful climb, we were invited to join a Christmas party with a big Mexican family. Playa El Coyote, it's at Baja de Concepcion. There's a lot of beaches around this area, like 30 kilometers full of different small beaches. The tent is right here, right next to the sea, like in the last spot. But we are having mixed feelings about this place because it is really beautiful here. The, the water is nice, it's actually swimmable, it's nice and clear. A lot of fish here, it's, it's quite warm. It's 25th of December and yeah, it's a beautiful place to be. At the same time, this is like really, really popular in here. The beaches are full of camper vans so we need to drive through like three different beaches until we got here to actually find a good spot there are camper vans who are staying here for many months yeah there are always people here who are coming to sell you things or offer you things which is not a bad thing it's a good thing uh, but it's also the highway is right next to this camp place maybe you can hear in the background the cars are passing by all the time also in the night time so it's quite loud in here kind of like mixed feelings it's a nice place but it's a bit busier than uh, I would like personally. I would prefer something more quiet and personal. But this is one of those places and there are gonna be a lot more places uh, to see. Also, in the previous night, we witnessed shining phosphorescence in the sea. So after driving for 2200 kilometers and for 10 days we have finally reached Cabo San Lucas, the southernmost point in Baja California. This place is really really busy, really touristic. We actually came here from uh, La Paz uh, just for a half a day. Yeah, you can see like, a lot of uh, tourists around. Locals are selling a lot of tours and different things. It feels a bit like uh, Playa del Carmen or uh, Cancun. 
so yeah, it feels like different to be here in a big town full of tourists after being in a desert for uh, 10 days. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting feeling. Back in La Paz, we booked a snorkeling tour. Even in my wildest dreams, I would not have imagined the day that was about to happen. We visited a huge and healthy sea lion colony next to Espirito Santos. The California sea lions are playful, gentle, curious and social animals, which makes them just like the dogs of the ocean. They weigh around 350 kilograms and grow up to 2 meters long. Sea lions must breathe air to survive, but they can hold their breath for as long as 20 minutes. Luckily, the sea lions in the area are protected. Plenty of regulations are in place to ensure a limited number of visitors and the tour operators are properly trained. After a lunch break on an isolated beach, We got the briefing for the second activity of the day. Swimming with the whale sharks. The whale sharks gather in the shallow lagoon close to the shore. After the guide notices the sharks, we jump in and try to swim along these big animals. Sometimes they take it slow, sometimes it takes an effort to catch up with them. The whale sharks are protected by international and Mexican law and many rules apply when swimming with these gentle giants. We always maintain a safe distance to the whale sharks and don't go in front of them in order not to disturb them. The whale sharks are the largest known fish and they do not surface to breathe air like whales do. The whale sharks in the Sea of Cortez tend to be around 7 to 10 meters in length but they can grow up to 18 meters long. They mostly feed on plankton and small fish and pose no threat to humans. And on the next day, we took part in another snorkeling tour in Cabo Pulmo National Park. What looks like rocks, but in reality this is a coral reef barrier that every now and then gets exposed depending on how the tides are. This is the first coral reef barrier of five that we have inside Cabo Pulmo Bay. During this tour, we got to witness some incredible sea life. Unfortunately, my camera stopped working the very moment it touched the water. A healthy coral reef, we saw a humpback whale from the boat, a huge school of fish, including two dolphins underwater, turtles, and yet again, some sea lions. So we have reached Cabo Pulmo. We rented a house here for a couple of days just to relax. It is the 31st of December, the last day of the year. The last couple of days have been full of um, activities uh, regarding exploring the sea and the underworld life. It has been literally amazing. Like I have never seen so much colors, so much different animals in the sea before. Now I have been to tropical locations but this has really literally uh, blown my mind how much stuff is happening here. Really, really amazing. It's the last day of the year, we're just taking uh, a slow day today and from tomorrow from 1st of January we start heading back to the north it will be a long trip we still have four or five days left so we will be stopping and seeing a lot of cool places uh, before we reach the north and the end of this trip so yeah this is the last day of uh, 2021 and it's spent on this on this beach and so the long journey back up north began Along the way, we were lucky to see huge fields of crop. An oasis in the middle of the desert. Abandoned buildings. A dried up lake.
town of San Felipe. So it's 4th of January and we are on our way back to Ensenada from San Felipe today. That means the trip is gonna end today. We're gonna drive tomorrow to Tijuana to return the car. And what a perfect way to end this trip is to complete the whole circle to finish at the same point as we started. Like right in here, we can see Picacho del Tablo, the mountain which we went to see on second day or third day of the, of the trip. So now we are seeing the same mountain from the other side which is really really cool. The last days, three, four days, we have been driving back. We have mostly been driving a lot, but at the same time we have still been seeing so many amazing things. Like yesterday driving towards San Felipe, it was the nature around... Even after two, three weeks, it's just like amazing. All of the desert around us. So we're driving back and we're just taking it all in, just enjoying. Um, I have never seen anything like this in my life, so but, but at the same time, I feel there is still so much more left to explore. This time we still mainly stuck to the highways, we stuck to the big roads. We didn't really go off the beaten path uh, to find good camping spots. We didn't find empty, desolated beaches this time. It would be so cool to come back here someday with 4x4, drive these desert roads and find a lot of cool spots because most of this peninsula is still deserted. Anyways, it's time to conclude this trip in Baja California. We have driven 4,000 kilometers by now, 16, 17 days, yeah, off to new adventures. Thank you for joining. Peace out.